Okay, Jack, so what are we talking about today? Well, Nico, as you can probably tell, I've been a little bit depressed recently. Yeah, why is that? Well, I recently celebrated my birthday and I'm feeling down about my advancing years. And to be honest, I just really, really don't want to get old. Okay, yeah, I can see where you're coming from, but I do think you're being a little bit ridiculous. You're not even that old. Guys, pause this video, leave us a comment letting us know how old you think Jack is. Oh, and by the way, I'm Nico, and this old git is Jack. Anyway, carry on, Jack. So yeah, I was talking to my Chinese friend about the uh, predicament I'm in. Let's call it a predicament, yeah? Okay. And he said, Oi, Lao Wai, stop being ridiculous. <laughs> he said, you live in China now, and when you live in China, there's one thing you need to know. Being young in China kind of sucks, and being old is where it's at. And these silver-haired badasses need no introduction. Just go to any public space or park in China, and you will come across the Sino Seniors. Retired folk living their best life with a zest and energy that would put most 21-year-olds across the world to shame. Today, we're going to discuss why growing old in China is, simply put, so much bloody fun. But first... Let's backtrack a little bit. We grew up in the UK where young people have a lot more freedom and often a lot less responsibilities than young people here in China. And in Western films, music and other popular culture, there's a popular concept called live fast, die young, which means, well, actually, I'll tell you what it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean spending your whole entire youth sat in your dorm room studying. That's for sure. Basically, in the UK, people try to pack in as much as possible into their youth. Experiences, travel, partying, because they know it won't last forever. And getting old is, well, just kind of Yeah, and in the UK, that's kind of true, to be honest, with most old people living in sad and lonely looking care homes. But when we arrived in China, we realized that was total BS, and there is another way. So the first thing you need to know about being old in China is you do not spend your days sitting in a chair staring out the window. You spend it in the park. You play games with your mates, you do exercise, you play your musical instrument, and all these activities tend to keep people quite young, bringing to mind the phrase, use it or lose it. Yeah, and another thing to bear in mind, actually, is that a lot of the retired folk here are, actually are relatively young. You see, in China, the retirement age is only 60 for men, 55 for women, and 50 for some women working in blue collars jobs. How amazing is that? Wow, that is pretty amazing. I'd like that retirement yeah. age. I could do that. I mean, it does sound pretty awesome, right? But the fact that women in China are only having an average of 1.3 babies now, compared to more than six in the 1950s, and the fact that people in China are living way longer, and the fact that there's almost zero immigration into China is all leading the country towards like a ticking, aging population time bomb. Okay, Jack, you're scaring me now. <laughs> well, don't worry, Nico. This ain't no economics video, so we won't dwell on it too long, but you just need to know this, right? China is experiencing the exact same thing that happened in Japan or Europe a few decades ago, only it's happening at a much faster pace. But there is good news. Well, okay. for some people anyway. As I mentioned before, in the UK, we actually used to have the exact same problem with like an aging population. And as like old people tend to be put in old people's homes or old folks' homes, it actually places a massive financial burden, not just on the government, but actually on families themselves. Whereas what I've noticed here is in China, a lot more of kind of the responsibility for looking after old people actually falls on the children of the elderly. Yeah, I've noticed that as well. It seems here a lot of generations all live under the same mm. roof, which means it works both ways. So if the grandparents get sick, the parents can look after them. And if the parents need help with the kids, then the grandparents are there to look after the kids. And it's so sweet when you go to a park and you see the grandparents playing with the kids. It's oh, so yeah, adorable. So yeah, and I definitely don't think you'd really see that in the UK as often, would you? Because it's actually a lot less common for like multiple generations of the same family to live under the same roof. Yeah, I totally agree. I also feel like there's this kind of stigma against mother-in-laws and not a lot of people could handle it. 
I feel like I was quite lucky. We had the best of both worlds, really, because my grandparents lived in the same town as my parents. So when I was growing up, my grandparents looked after us a lot. When my parents were out at work, they took us to school, they made us dinner, I stayed at their house a lot. So I felt like I got the best of both worlds, really. And when I see the grandparents here in China spending that much time with their grandchildren, it just really brings back so many memories for me. I'd say that Chinese people are generally a lot less selfish, to be honest, and I think they're kind of expected to put the needs of the family before their own. Oftentimes, it'll actually be the older members of the family who are calling the shots. That's because in China, people really respect the wisdom of age. So when I was researching this video, I kept coming across the term filial piety, which is basically a Confucian idea that you need to show respect for your elders and pay them back for the burden of looking after you when you were young. And I also heard that way back in the day, a man was supposed to honor his deceased father by occupying a hut next to his grave for 25 whole months, as well as abstaining from meat, wine, and even sex. But these days, things have definitely moved on, but I have noticed just how much respect people still have for their elders, especially in the workplace. So Jack, what have you noticed about age dynamics in the workplace? Well, to sum it up, I'd say it's bloody, bloody important. So the first thing you need to know is that you must respect the leaders at all costs. Yeah. The oldest person will definitely have the authority. Yeah. I've noticed a lot of my Chinese colleagues like cover up their leader's mess. To save face. Yeah, yeah, to help yeah, everyone definitely. save face. So when you go on a business trip in China, you um, will obviously go for a lot of dinners. Mm -hmm. Often a lot of baijiu is consumed. Mm -hmm. You'll end up eating in a big like circular table in a private room. Whoever the most senior person will take their position at the head of the table, usually facing the door. Because I was kind of the guest or they didn't have a lot of foreigners coming to their, their area, they would uh, then invite me to sit on to their left or right. And then I'd always wow. feel a bit a embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, I'd always feel a bit embarrassed. You know, they'd be feeding with me with their chopsticks, feeding me with their baijiu. <laughs> Well, even though China is developing rapidly, it still keeps a lot of its old traditions. Yeah, and did you hear the one about the uh, national judicial exam for a few years ago? Mm, the one, is this a joke? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a joke, right? It definitely isn't. This is very serious uh, matter. So basically, the national judicial exam is what you have to take if you want to be a lawyer in China, right? Okay. This is an objective right or wrong test question. Would you okay. like to hear it? Yeah, sure, hit me. If there's a burning building uh -huh. and your mother and your girlfriend are trapped inside, uh -huh. who would you save? Well, you would choose me, obviously, right? Well, then I'd have failed the exam. Oh my God, really? Yep. Wow, guys, what about you? Who would you choose? Leave us a comment below letting us know, would you pick your girlfriend or wife or your mother? Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I'm super intrigued to see the responses. Yeah, who, really though, who would you have picked? You obviously. Oh. <laughs> Liar. So maybe we should bring it back to a slightly lighter note, eh? Yeah. Do you think that China would be a good place to retire? Oh my God, I think it would be the best place. I would love to spend my days dancing or working, working out. out. Here, and, that'd yeah, that would be sick. <laughs> I don't think it'll be quite as good for the younger generation right now because they're probably going to have to work a lot longer, but maybe technology will have an answer for that. Yeah, it really wouldn't surprise me if China of all places could find a solution to the aging population problem using technology. But there is one thing that kind of nurse robots and anti-fall watches cannot offer and that's love, respect, and most importantly, company. So like I mentioned before, here in the cities, it's quite common for multiple generations to live under the same roof. Mm. But in rural areas, old people are often left to fend for themselves because their kids have gone to the cities in search of work. Yeah, I remember when we stayed with our old mate Ye Ye in a, his little rural village in Hunan province. We spent a few days like staying with him and we got to grips with his life. Like yeah. every day he'd go around his village and he was pretty fit. He'd go and like visit all his mates around the village 
And it was just like really nice observing it. And I think that's probably why he was so welcoming to us actually, is because like his kids had long since left to go and work in the city, in Guangzhou actually. And so what is life if you've got no one to share it with? Yeah, I mean, like what does happen here in China if you don't have someone to look after you? Are there old people's homes like in the UK? Well, it's funny you should say that actually. I was doing a little bit of research before this video, obviously, and I came across this old people's home in an area of like Fujian province, which is pretty, pretty rural. People are pretty poor there and a lot of them don't actually have the time or the resources to look after their old people. There's a uh, old temple in one of the villages there in the mountains and they basically converted it into like an old people's home, like which they call an old people's orphanage, which is adorable. And they've got people from the age of like 70 up until like 100. And the youngest ones who are still pretty old look after the old ones, comb their hair and stuff. And it's so cute. But actually, I also read like the uh, head nun shared a pretty sad story in an interview I read. Yeah. She basically said that like um, one day there was an old guy in like a neighboring village and he had eight children. And every day he'd go to each of his children's house like every morning. And one day, not single one of him, them, not single one of his children invited him in for breakfast. And so he went home and killed himself, which is just heartbreaking and shows why these kind of things are so, so important, um, especially in the rural areas where there's a lack of resources. Oh, that's so sad. I feel like I'm gonna cry. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling like a bit of a grad, bad grandson now that we've made this film. It's making me think about like my granddad and think about how bad we are living on the other side of the world. Um, so yeah, on that note, I think I'm gonna leave you guys to it and go home and ring my granddad in it. Assuage my guilty conscience. Okay guys, I think that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about the old people here in China. As always, like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.